Hey everybody. What's up? I keep getting caught up in listening to the intro music. This one kind of, I don't know, it's got this big spaciousness. Not too heavy, but powerful still. Who's in the chat already? Who was first today? Wispa, mega early. New Drexian is here. What's up? What's up, Soul Machine? Asatenko. Josh Holiday. James Porch. Mysterious Man says hello, people of the chat. Acid Bat. Intro vibes, right? Yeah, that... I, that's another unreleased one, you know, in the in the very uh, beginning. Someone was asking about whether whether that was yeah, Luminous Cloud asked if that was the West Pest doing something generative, and it is generator generative, but it's it's all it's software. It's something I did at Ableton Live a while back. I think some kind of randomization, uh, definitely some follow actions going on with the clips shifting around a little bit, some kind of evolution, some, the, the polymetric stuff, things going in it, like the phrases going in and out of sync makes it seem like it's evolving. I love doing stuff like that. Who else here is in the chat? Let's see. Simple Sam is hungover. Hope you uh, are hydrating properly. And uh, Max, Max Wild, our fearless leader here at 343. Greetings, Oval Shrimp and Arnold Buen. Looks like I'm, oh, Ladislav is here. What's up, Lad? Nice to see you here in the chat. Josh Holiday is asking track IDs. Yes, we can do that. Let's get started. What's up, everybody? It's me. I'm here. It's Saturday. It's Electro. I'm getting in the mood, and I hope you are too. Uh, it's 343 TV brought to you by 343 Labs Music Production School in New York City and in Berlin. We got our online classes. We got our in-person classes. We've got 343 Studio, our uh, kind of online producer hub. You can join and get feedback and mentorship and join in sample challenges and uh, group collaboration or all sorts of things like that. So yeah, you know what we do. And I, I'm here every Saturday. Abe's here every Friday sometimes. Tetra's here on Tuesdays. And uh, I don't know. I feel like we need to get some more streams going more often. We've been trying to encourage our other instructors and uh, artists in residence and people who are here in the, you know, in the building teaching in person or online to like, do a little bit of this. I think it would be fun. So yeah, keep your eyes out. There will be, I think, talk to Max. Max can tell you. He's in the chat. He's in charge. I should let him say it. But anyway, I'm just, I'm just saying. I think that's we should do more. I, I'll, I, don't hold me to this quite yet because I got to figure out my schedule. But, and you know, it just depends on logistics and business stuff. But like, I, I wouldn't mind doing it twice a week sometimes, depending on, you know how things are going. I don't know. We'll see. I feel like the possibilities are almost endless. We just got to figure out the details. So, huh. What are we doing today? I'm going to go back to the chat here before we kind of dive in and see what else you guys are talking about. Luminous Cloud says, I've been using K devices Tatat for generative. I'm not familiar with that. I'm going to have to look that one up. And, um, Oh, welcome, old home. Got another new name in here. And Raz fan, hello. Happy Saturday, everybody. Oh, wait, back to Josh Holiday's asking for the track IDs. So the first, the first thing in the intro, in the, well, the pre kind of, it's supposed to be a countdown. I need a timer. I need a countdown timer. That would make it more of a countdown, wouldn't it? That's an unreleased track of mine, actually. And um, 
Oh my gosh, the name has, I can't even remember the name of it. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And, uh, right, so that was the first thing. It's kind of a more chill that, you know, it's not a dance floor tune, obviously. And then um, the track that came in just after that was actually a new track that's coming out soon on the next uh, electro compilation on Tronic more than machine actually we can take a look I just so happen to have the artwork set up already <laughs> hmm and uh, uh, that that's going to be coming out real soon I think the promos just starting now starting now so it'll be getting into the hands of some you know DJs and people like that and hopefully it'll get played out a little bit uh, I don't know what the actual uh, street date release date is but probably soon probably I don't know got to be within the next couple months if we're promoing it now so yeah that's what it's called, More Than Machine. Let's zoom in. We got some nice names on this compilation. We got Alexander Kowalski, who is, you know, mainly known as a techno producer, um, dabbles in electro also, kind of like me. Um, Christian Smith, you know, leader of Tronic Records and partner of mine in the studio. CJ Boland is a legend of techno. He's been there from the beginning. He's a really great producer. Client 03. I love Client 03 so much. If, you, if you're into electro, you have to know Client 03. Very, very good. Zero three client three. I don't know why am I saying oh. Uh, um, and there's some names on here that are more new to me, like Diego Infanzon. Frank Cartel is another electro producer that I regard highly. Some guy named John Selway, and uh, I don't know about him. Mamen Kusters. I hope I'm saying that right. That's another new name for me. Uh, Robin Johansson. Johansson. I'm just not mess. I'm messing these names up. I'm sure. Samuel L. Session is another, and Stanley Abram both. Uh, seasoned techno producers also you know dipping their toe in the electro pool so yeah i've heard this whole thing it's awesome i just i don't know i'm psyched about this release it's it's a good one it's very strong so and i'm glad to be a part of it so you know keep your eye out for this anyway that's that's what it was that track was my my track from that release coming out soon lie society says this is yes i agree with this i need to explore electro more it's there's so much there's so much out there i mean there's so much of everything out there right and uh luminous clouds making a request this is something i don't know if we're going to do this today but i like this idea and you know once i get my i just haven't i bought the west pest to arrive this week and i haven't here i'll just hold it up i don't have my overhead set up right now but that's that's what we're talking about this thing's only two hundred fifty dollars, which is an incredible deal. Based, you know, if I listened to demos of it. It sounds incredible, and especially for the price. And you know, it's Euro rack ready. Like you can put you can put this in a rack. It's got all the, you know, CV and everything. And um, it's got a built-in sequencer. It's got a well, you know West Coast style complex oscillator. And I don't know. This sort of synth is just a, it's like a yet another perfect little uh, techno or electro kind of instrument right it'll be so good to tweak the knobs and play with this so once i spend some time with this i don't want to do a live stream and then be like i don't know where where's that command again you know which button did i press like i'd rather know it first <laughs> rather than just sort of stumble around uh, in real time uh, so yeah i'm definitely gonna bring that on and then you're right doing some kind of generative thing to make electro using um you know, odd step lengths, you know, basically polymeter. I do that kind of stuff all the time. So good suggestion, Luminous Cloud. Uh, and another good comment here. I've noticed this as well. Some of the best electro is on techno B-sides. I have to say, there's kind of a thing. Like, it's sort of a, a cliche. There's like an, a, a techno EP, and it's got the one token electro track on it or the one token other genre, whether it's like dub or minimal or house or whatever but yeah electro is a common uh you know beef b2 track on on an ep and but and sometimes it's just like filler but every now and then there's some really standout amazing electro track that's like kind of hidden and the, those are good things to dig for you know when you're going through releases on discogs or in the record shop or something like that all right and oh yeah, we were talking about like uh, the price of this West Pest thing. No, simple Sam, not 500 euros, $250. And then the Behring, Behringer Crave is 150 which is like, that's another one that's incredible. I mean, okay, it's a knockoff of something else, but that's another, that's an incredible 
am- amount of synthesis power for the price. It's a, we we are, we live in like kind of a golden age of of synthesizers right now. There's more available than ever. And the flip side of that now is due to the economy and supply chain issues. Some of these smaller boutique companies are having to close, but that's sad. And you know, then you've got these behemoths like Behringer kind of taking over the market. But um, I hope some of these smaller cool companies stick can stick with it and survive because there's been so much kind of innovation and interesting stuff coming out in the last few years. It is amazing. Right. Um, I'm taking note of your comments. For sure, Akshay Sharma is asking about insights into making electro effects sounds. Um, that sounds like a good topic for a stream. I'm definitely going to note that down and do that today. Let's talk about what I'm doing today. All right, so this is a track that some of you were around for. I've been working on previously. Uh, there's a bunch of sketches and ideas that I've done over the... Uh, over the however over the days over, over over the months that i sometimes forgot about i mean i didn't totally forget about this but i i was planning to start working and refining and arranging this and um where's the i'm missing my there's a clear button that's missing to like get rid of the comments all right you're just gonna have to look at this comment for a while i don't know why it's stuck there um Anyway, I'm getting distracted by the chat thing not working right. So yeah, I have this track I'm working on. I'm trying to get it. Uh, I want to get it more fleshed out. So that's what we're doing today. Now I've I've added one new element since the last time I had this on the stream, and I guess I wanted. I, I I'm trying to find the line here. It's an electro track. It's atmospheric and 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 kind of spacey. But I want to I want to also keep it stripped down enough and groovy enough to for a dance floor tune as well. So that's kind of where I'm thinking right now. Let's let's get in there and and take a listen to what we have at the moment. All right, I'm going to put on um a smaller comment <laughs> to take up less screen space. It's really weird that that the button is missing. I wonder if I can refresh this thing. There's no refresh. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird what's going on with this uh, chat thing. I can always turn it off, actually. Here, let's, um, for now. Bye. All right, let's, let's see what we've got in the arrangement. I'll be curious if any of you actually remember this. Whoa. I didn't remember there was supposed to be a kick drum there. Let's start again. There's John H. Kingston the third. Just popped into the chat. I wondered. He's usually first. What happened? All right, we got the big ominous intro. I'm really feeling this vibe. Oh, I remember now, like, the way that I, I kind of, the, where you think the downbeat is, is kind of not. And that's something I was thinking about revisiting. Because parts are coming in, like, like, where do you think the downbeat is? It's not... I mean, you, you think it's where the bass line is, right? I think the, the things are lined up funny. And in one way, it's cool because it feels like it's kind of cycling in a weird way. Things come in and sort of off. So far, so good, though. Like, it's flowing. And then, and then that's a minute and a half, and then we have to figure out where to go from here. Now... It's a nice little break. Maybe the beats should just come back right here. Boom. So that, all right. So I have already, I'm thinking, what do I need to do with this? I could put the, I, uh, in that little break there, it's a little empty. We could try copying those pads, perhaps. Perhaps. 
And then... Maybe, maybe we do that. I think I might have some other uh, drum pattern variations to play with. Wisp is coming in with the comments already. He's got all sorts of them. Right, what happens if this comes in? Kind of a skip to it. This is a variation on the the backbeat changes a little bit. Actually, no, it's not the backbeat. It's the syncopation of the kick is different. All right, so I have that, and then I have this new element that I'm playing with, which is this. Yeah. <laughs> this is definitely a good like B section to the other A section kind of vibe. And I think these should play together nicely, the, uh, the analog, ominous, initial bass melody. Just doing a little call and response, which always is a cool, I love doing that in electro arranging. Just having elements kind of go back and forth like that. And then I have this as kind of a lead element. Like, I need to figure out where to bring that in. Now, I've been kind of playing around with the arrange record going, just so this is already adding into the arrangement. I'm gonna have to go back and fix it. And I also want to play with the 303, because that just, it just begs to be played with. easily take over. It's probably a little loud. We'll fix that. I don't want it to be too tweaky. I don't want it to be like acid. But I do want it to be dynamic and like change. But I also uh, like the idea of doing this different transposition because it creates a different harmony. I don't even mind the, the pitchy, like, floating around kind of modulation. All right, I gotta fix that one. But you, you hear what it's doing, right? Kind of bending up and down in different sections. play with this for a little bit more and then we'll go back and think about what else this arrangement needs to do or do we need any more elements to add he's messing it up now Probably won't do that. It's too much fun to play with this. All right, that's still going. All right, the three or three sequences are just going and going and going. I need to play with the drums. I need to break down the drums. Ominous, epic break, maybe? I don't know. Like, and what happens with the, uh, with that pad thing?
you know, back when I, when this started, we were, I was ex get, uh, trying out all of these teenage engineering plugins using Ruina to just like crunch and distort everything in weird ways, which I like. Okay. What's this? That's intense. That could just be an interesting effect that comes in every now and then. I don't know if I want that to continue. I like it as a... I don't know. Scary thing that happens somewhere. What are these drums doing? Need to work on the mix of the drums a little bit. All right, I forgot about that trans transposition that I had done. I don't think I'm using this snare. Maybe it's like a a fill sometimes. Yeah, only as a occasional transitional thing. Okay. What else is this bass line doing? Oh, there's a transposition. So even a little bit of a chord change, interesting. I mean, I'm okay with that. Okay. And I haven't even been playing around with this sound. That's another thing we can do. Let's see what's happening with this sound that I made earlier today. What is going on? This is actually, when I was making the sound, I kind of had the idea that I wanted a sharp, you know, tight, clean, kind of mechanically robotic rhythm. I mean, it's very electro, right? Um, and I remember people posting questions on like Discord and other like Reddit or I forget someone a couple of times I'd seen people asking about how do I do this sound that sounds like this track where each note is modulating separately, right? And there's all these there's of course there's a million different ways to do it. A lot of people use, you know, like um parameter locking or parameter sequencing in, in hardware. Um and I oftentimes if I if I want it to be constantly making variations i'll I, it's sample and hold it is almost always what it is it's just key triggered every time a note plays it sends a different value to the parameter so that that was how i started out with the sound was just to uh oh let let's make sure the midi is on all right now you probably want to see the synth again right so yeah, every time I play a note. It's a really simple sound, actually, but because of the randomization, it makes it seem so much more com complex in the musical context. And that's literally just sample and hold. You can see every time I play a note, re-triggers and does a random value. And it's not a lot. It's just a little bit, right? And I'm actually using two of them so that I get two different values every time I hit a note. And you've got the Foreman filter, the frequency shift, and the morph are both just jumping around ram randomly and creating subtle not, or not so subtle variations every note. I wonder what happens if I do other ones. Let's see. I didn't think this was going to turn into a synthesis sound design thing, but... It just came up in my brain. Sometimes that's how this works. <laughs> All right. So um, actually, let's go to random three. So what the blend is doing is it's, it's like a wet dry for the filter. So we're getting more. Sometimes we're getting more of the unfiltered signal, and sometimes we're getting less of the unfiltered signal. Could do Q factor. That's going to be more or less resonant. Not 
changing that much, is it? And then it's also doing the wavetable position. So, it, you know, the oscillator shape is changing at the same time as the formant. Formants are shifting around in the formant filter. I'm going to do a little bit less of this. All right. What does that sound? I like it. I didn't break it. I was thinking I kind of maybe want this to be fatter on the bottom. So let's give it a sub oscillator. Let's just see. Can I even hear that? Is it too low? Bring it up an, off, uh, an octave. Let's make it not do... I'm having it go straight into filter 2. And turn it up. Yeah, maybe too much sawtooth wave. Let's go to triangle. Too... too yeah, I'm not sure it's not giving me the thickness that I want. I think maybe I need something more complex and more controllable than just this utility oscillator. So let's go to engine two and uh, see what happens. Yeah, it's like super low, right? Why is it sounding like that? That's better. Yeah, we just need more. I wonder if I go straight, because this is a bandpass filter, and it could just be it's just taking away too much. I don't know. I can't go straight out, I think. All right, we're going to figure it out. What if we do some FM? just wants more harmonics in this. Oh. All right, that's cool. All right, it's too bright, but that's sort of the idea is trying to make a something thicker to, to sit underneath the one that's bouncing around. It's already a little bit better, I think. What else could we do? We can go to the effects section. I mean, it's got this multi-band kind of OTT style thing happening. Actually, I think I might just leave it. Let's hear how it sounds with the beat. I also don't want it to be way too subby because of the 808s. It might get in the way of the 808s. Nice. All right. Someone said they asked this. That I was. <laughs> Akshay Sharma. I asked that on Reddit and Discord. The thing with the sample and hold, right? You are welcome. Glad that we covered a topic that you were curious about. Now, that's a good that's a good mixing technique to make something sound bassier, cut the mids. That's what the Stefan suggests. I'm not gonna dwell on it too much right now. I'm, I might go back to it when we're when I'm really polishing this off. I think I think we want to uh, try to zoom back out again and look at the big picture here. All right, all right. That's where we started. I, I started out with thinking about the arrangement thinking about elements that I have, thinking about what else I might need. Um, and then I got into tweaking that one sound that I started this morning, and then we got into synthesis and sound design uh, details, right? But actually, I, it's funny. I gotta, like, I gotta say, when I'm working on tracks, I'm not a person that like does only one sort of thing at... Uh, you know, well, I don't like do a only sound design and then only composition and then only arranging and then only mixing. It's always switching back and forth between modes, right? So like, especially if I'm getting more into a track and my mind is like kind of deep into, into it, I'll like 
be working on an arrangement and then I'll come across uh, like some sound design stuff that I need to do to make the arrangement do what I want to do, that kind of thing. And yeah, it, you know, with modulation and having sounds evolving, especially, that's definitely kind of, I, 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 I kind of try to be able to switch modes. It's, it's hard sometimes, You like uh, someone was just saying in the chat about getting getting stuck in the getting lost into the synthesis and then not actually making music. Well, that's what, what you have to figure out is how to like pull yourself out of it. And, uh, like, uh, you know, being able to know how to switch your brain from one mode to another mode. I mean, that goes with any kind of music, right? So let's see. It's one thirty-four. We're halfway through. I, I, I want to get back into this, but I just want to, uh, take a uh, a breath here and say uh welcome anthony rother glad to have you back here you were actually hanging out when i started working on this track some months ago so glad that you're back for the continuation and uh who else is here in the chat that i didn't say hello to bill is here bill bancroft a may is in here um lie society you were you here earlier did i miss you chicken sandwich i love that Chicken sandwich is here. It's lunchtime. Someone get me my sandwich. After, after the stream is done, I'm going to go have lunch. All right. Stefan Ralescu says, embrace the dub approach. I do that all the time. Definitely. Um, I feel like for this, sometimes, this, like sometimes for electro, you need to kind of have some precision. I'm sure uh, Mr. Rother would agree that there's like a, a very precise structure to not only the groove, but to a track that can make or break whether it works, right? So, but you can find the, you can use the the spontaneous kind of dubby elements also in between within that structure. And that's kind of, I think that's sort of where I'm living right now in mentally, All right? So let's go to the arrangement view. Let's just get out of the session view and see what we have here and see if I can kind of, make this a little bit more cohesive in terms of its structure. I'll be honest, doing really good arrangements on a live stream is not the easiest thing <laughs> to like have a conversation with you guys and also get really into it. Um, but you know, we try it's, I still have fun kind of playing around. So let's go back here now that I've got some ideas and we've talked and I've distracted myself away from arranging. Let's get back into the arrangement. Let's start from the beginning again and see what we need to, to, to fix. I think I know the first thing I want to do is that we were ta I was talking earlier about how the downbeat is not where it, it, you would expect it. And for some reason, when I wrote these parts, I kind of had it going off. Where's the bass? Yeah, you can see here, the first note of the bass line is in the second bar of the phrase. So really that should be the first, that should be the downbeat of the first bar is where that note is, right? So what I'm gonna do is just make this easier on myself and delete <laughs> the first bar, delete time, shift everything back a bar and all the changes should be where you anticipate them to be now. favorite part when that bass that bass melody is all by itself and I like that there's that 808 boom that's sort of surprising like it's still things are still coming in early but the beginning of the phrase is correct now I, I might fix some of this but I kind of don't mind it when things come in at odd times. That hi-hat though, I don't like. I'm gonna make that hi-hat come in at 33 instead. I feel like it could 
something could develop a little bit more quickly here. I brought in that uh, little percussion sound a little sooner. All right. Maybe I'm just being impatient. Maybe it's okay. And we have our small break. Uh, let's just drop down. Here's the part where I found it to be tricky last time, actually. And it's kind of, I remember like we were getting up to the end of the stream and I'm like, I'm not sure what I want to do here. Um, is how to make that, s whether to leave in this ominous initial bass melody or to switch into the new one and have it be suddenly kind of different. Something needs to hit there nicely, right? Now, what if we just suddenly bring in the 303 right there? Let's try that. Because it's something needs to come in clear and have the right energy, the right contrast at that moment. And that's what I was thinking earlier about, like, the precision of it. Like, this is where it has to be precisely right so it gets the right energy at the right moment. And... Whether to get it, it's trial and error. I missed the base. So I have an idea. Let's see, what, what if we bring in... I don't know. What I'm doing, I'm actually taking stuff away to see. Making space for that. Da -da -da -da. Maybe the bass has to stay. I think maybe it needs to stay. Yeah, Josh just suggested what I was doing. He says solo one of the sounds before the drop. And and that's that's what's happening here. I mean there's a little overlap because of the pad fading out. But right there at bar sixty-four. And I got rid of all these other clips. I could make this let's see what happens if I stop it. And it's got such a long release on the synth. I don't mind this actually. No. <laughs> All right. I know what you mean, Josh, about like soloing, like cutting it completely dry. Well, I mean the same thing could be. Uh, I don't. I don't know if that pad's gonna sound good if I. I feel like it goes away too suddenly. I don't mind that overlap. It just has enough of a different feeling. I really put myself out on the tightrope here. Like, I could fall off any second now. Like, something is missing here. On the one hand, I can listen to this repeat forever and really enjoy it. On the other hand, I feel like more needs to be happening sooner. So that's the conundrum I'm in right now. I'm going to listen to this again and just think about it. I know it's like... And this is something that happens when you're working on music. Is you get, you might, it might take you a while to break through a wall that you're coming up against. And it's going to be a lot of repetition. I know like... There have been times when I'm working on music at home and I'm, I have the monitors up 
and my family will be like, we can't listen to this beat anymore. It's <laughs> Meanwhile, I have no idea that I've been listening to the same loop for an hour because I'm so focused. All right. That could go away. Just gonna throw in some other parts. A little sooner, just to make some variation. Just adding that hi hat kind of makes sense. James says, James Ford says we all have these dilemmas. Absolutely. I know what I can do. Remember, I also have this. Musical variation. It doesn't have to be a new element. It can just be a change to an existing element. Whoa, what was that? Something got real loud on that Synsonics plug-in. All of a sudden, that hi-hat went crazy. I don't know. All right, if it's going to keep... Yeah, this. it seems like this, this sound just broke. That's annoying. We'll just turn it down. It's not what it's supposed to sound like. Let's go in and fix where that uh, alternative. Um... Variation on the basses. I kind of like it. It's like a end of the phrase. I'm gonna change the color so you can find. Oh, we can just keep going. You know, I think I wanted to not go off that often. Dude, Ableton Live clip issues. Now, the 303 should also be changing as well. That's another thing I was playing around with, right? We did all this automation. There it is. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just copy some of this stuff a little bit sooner. And that way, it'll be there. I love that you can do this. You can just take the automation and... How much? We go here. I shifted all that automation that I recorded back to where I wanted in the arrangement. And there's no clips, right? The, the sequence is coming out of the synth. Too soon. Right, so that didn't exactly work because it, it started too suddenly. Um, but you, let's try and figure out why it did that all of a sudden. Uh huh. Okay, the volume got higher for one thing. All right, let's go in and copy all of this and see if I can't get it on a little bit more on point this time than the last time. We want that to start here, I think. There we go. It was jumping up suddenly right at 65. I think this might work better. Keep the volume down. 
Actually, let's not automate the track volume at all. Smoother now. And then you'll remember I did that transposition. I transposed the pattern down to a different uh, pitch. All right, that doesn't need to be there. Big change, just that one moment where it transposes down. It's a little sudden. Right, and then when, when I actually did it, it sort of bent down. I don't know, it might be funny to do this pitch bend, but let's see. Could be interesting. Oh, nice. Anthony Roth is saying, take the melody away. And, uh, yeah, good. And I think that's what it, that's what this track needs is, I mean, it's so hypnotic and it has this really good, you know, uh, velocity. I don't know. Is that the right momentum momentum? Um, but you know, it's, it, I want to keep the, I want to keep the tension, but also make it interesting to listen to. I don't know. That's what we're trying to balance here. So yeah, I think having if you're gonna I'm gonna switch between different sections with the melody, without the melody, with the bass, without the bass. That's what we're looking for. Why is that all of a sudden so quiet? <laughs> Weird. Didn't seem to get that quiet before when I brought the... Right. We're in a quagmire, but we're going to make it work eventually. We'll just, you know, it may not all happen today. <laughs> or at least during the stream. Now what? Right, so I'm listening to Anthony. Like, try taking the melody away. I just did, but does something else need to happen instead? And what does that need to be? The melody, this melody again? There's also this other bright, sort of scary thing that happens sometimes. I'm gonna just throw it in there and hopefully get a, a happy accident. Drums need to change too. Let's see what other drum variations we have. I don't mind that. Kind of got that rolling feeling all of a sudden if we do that. Let's see. We take some kick drums out here. That worked well before where things went away and we just had that tighter 16th note sample and hold bass sound by itself. Having those kind of sudden switches between sections, uh, definitely. All right, I don't need those guys. Let's turn this off.
We'll do that thing again where we mute some stuff and highlight that plucky bass sound. Maybe even shut the 303 off there. Hmm. Why not? And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of all the drums. I did it in the wrong spot. <laughs> all right, let's listen to it again. That is another thing that comes up all the time with arranging is remembering to go back and... Um, re sort of orient yourself to where you are in the arrangement making sure that the edits you're making the changes you're making are um in the right spot which i think i just put in the i just didn't soon, right? Right there. So right before that 81, we're going to mute some stuff and hopefully that'll still work. I don't know what happened to that uh, Synsonic hi-hat. It got all weird. I had to turn it down. <laughs> And that actually makes a sense. Makes sense now. Like having that, I could even try b taking away the 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 the, the, uh, the main bass melody, f and I have to think about whether I want to add something new there. But it could be we can open it up a little bit. kind of a little bit of a switch, right? And I don't know if it's too soon to do this change. I mean, I like it. Is it the right spot? What happens if I put this again? Or maybe even make a variation with this pad melody to do something different. Yeah, I like that there's a note there. Yeah, it's like telling a diff uh, telling a different story now. Like a, a simplified version of that theme from the beginning. I missed the 303 though. And I missed I missed that too. I feel like I need another strong I might. I might, I can figure this out gonna happen off camera I bet it's already 157 we've somehow made it up to the hour almost I'm gonna listen to this one more time before we wrap things up and just sort of you know think about where we are I'm even thinking about getting rid of that percussion sound Thinking. You can see my head waving my hand around. I'm thinking about what to say. Maybe it's maybe we don't need the 303 yet. Is this a breakthrough? It's a lot of distortion on that pad. I probably need to EQ it a little bit. Or bring it down a little bit. I think we just found our answer. Wait to put the 303 in until later. Thank you. 
and let the bass play for a little while. It's more serious sounding now. Here we go. Ah, where is it? Yeah, better. Definitely better. Okay. I'm, I I feel like I got somewhere. I made it. I made I, I, I Now I know. Okay. I'm glad even though it's funny, it was a struggle the first time I went through this. And after like months of not working on it and doing, brought it out in front of you guys again and it was still a little bit of a struggle to uh to uh um get through this arrangement it's funny there's just something about these parts as much as i like them they're fighting me a little bit right so yeah i i think it's still good for you guys to see this like it's not always easy and um you know we got to talk a little bit about you know just sort of how to go through this and we also got a little bit of a sound design in the middle there with pigments and doing that sample and hold trick which is just like that's like some electro 101 stuff is using uh sample and hold to control like filter frequency or wave shape or or if you want to be more precise about it you use a step sequencer that can do or that you can do uh parameter locking or whatever velocity also because then you can just draw in the pattern that you want to do the rhythmic uh changes all of those work but i love doing it i love doing it with sample and hold because it's always evolving and it's slightly different every time because it's pseudo random all right. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with me today. I feel like that kind of went okay after all. I'm definitely going to finish this track. I'm, I'm only like halfway through. After months, I have to buckle down and finish this and polish it off because I need to put some tracks out. I have a lot of unfinished stuff that you guys have seen me uh, dive into here, and also I have stuff that I do when I'm not live streaming. So. There's got to be some electro. I need to put out an electro release. Got to happen. 2023. Got to put out at least one EP in a year, right? So thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, as always, stick with us. Subscribe. Like. Check out our links in the description for 343 Labs, 343 Studio, and all, all the things that we've got going on. If you're not in our Discord already, definitely. Uh, Come and join us and say hello. And yeah, think about uh, think about diving in on uh, taking a course with me or with Abe or any one of our fine instructors, depending on what you're looking for. And I highly recommend 343 Studio as sort of an entryway into, into a deeper connection to 343 Labs and the community here, you know, getting feedback on your tracks and mentorship and that kind of stuff. Um, I really enjoy doing that. So I am speaking of feedback planning to do finally another couple of sessions i want to do a techno feedback uh, stream and sometime in october another electro one definitely uh you know with a guest you know i want to i want to hook up a couple of uh of interesting artists or producers to join and listen and check out what you guys are doing so keep your eye out for that and um yeah you know social media discord will be announcing when those things are happening so shout out to everybody. Actually, speaking of uh, Discord, the you know there's some electro production uh, channels going on that that I've dipped into every now and then. Definitely gonna let you guys know. Hopefully, some of you are hanging out today. And uh, that's it. That's all for today. See you guys next time. Adios.